Hi friends! Do you have worries in your head that are difficult to control? Do you feel nervous or anxious before or during certain activities? Anxiety is an emotion that all kids and teens experience. Today you will learn how to manage anxiety by following two simple steps. Number one, understand your triggers, causes, and symptoms of anxiety. Number two, use coping skills to reduce and better manage anxiety. Anxiety is your brain and body's way of letting you know that you are threatened or in danger. This is normal, automatic, and a good response intended to help you survive dangerous situations. The problem with anxiety is that although it is intended to protect you, it often comes during moments when you are not truly threatened or in danger. It can sometimes cause you to avoid normal situations or activities that make you feel nervous, worried, or fearful. The first step to managing your anxiety is to become more aware of how anxiety impacts you by understanding triggers, causes, and symptoms of anxiety. You can do this by number one, learning about the things that trigger your anxiety. A trigger is something that causes you to feel worried, nervous, or anxious. There are many things that can trigger your anxiety. Examples of triggers might include being in a large crowd of people, taking a test, giving a speech or presentation, being away from your parents, or being teased or bullied. It can be helpful to sit down with yourself, a parent, or a counselor to make a list of all the things that trigger your anxiety. Once you know your anxiety triggers, you can then start making plans to turn to coping skills when a trigger arises. Number two, understanding the underlying causes of your anxiety. Underlying causes of anxiety are things such as personality type, brain chemistry, social pressures, school pressures, genetics, or life stresses. Personality types that contribute to anxiety might include being a perfectionist, being overly negative, or being critical of yourself. Sometimes chemicals in our brain misfire, causing anxiety. Social pressures include negative peers, feeling like you don't fit in, or being judged by others. School pressures include grades, parent or teacher expectations, not enough time, or trouble understanding or keeping up with schoolwork. A family history of anxiety often plays a role in how severe our anxiety is. Life stresses that can cause anxiety might include stressful situations at home, school, or with friends. Other things that might cause anxiety include health issues, medication, or drugs and alcohol. Understanding the causes of your anxiety can help you develop skills and positive habits to better manage it. For example, if school pressure is the cause, then you might want to work with a parent or teacher to come up with a study or organizational plan to help reduce your anxiety. But if the cause is related to genetics or brain chemistry, then you might want to talk to a counselor or doctor about how you can best manage your symptoms. It can be helpful to sit down with yourself, a parent, or a counselor to make a list of all the possible causes of your anxiety. Number three, noticing signs and symptoms you experience when you're feeling anxious. There are many signs and symptoms that kids feel when they have anxiety. Common symptoms of high anxiety may include feeling worried or nervous, stomach aches or butterflies in your stomach, your hands or legs shaking, trembling voices, tense muscles, racing heartbeat, trouble concentrating, trouble falling asleep, or feeling irritable or easily annoyed. For more information on common signs and symptoms of anxiety, check out the links in the description below. Take some time to sit down with yourself, a parent, or a counselor to make a list of all the symptoms you experience when you were anxious or worried. Our anxiety symptoms can be helpful signals to let us know that it is time to use a coping skill to calm our brain and body. The next big step to managing anxiety is to use helpful coping skills to reduce and better manage your anxiety. Using coping skills is one of the top strategies that kids and teens can do to manage anxiety. Let's start by breaking down anxiety coping skills into four main categories. Number one, relaxation skills. These are things you can do to relax your brain and body. Examples of relaxation skills for anxiety include taking three deep breaths, Tensing and relaxing your muscles, meditating, taking a nap, massaging your neck or shoulders, thinking of a peaceful place, or using a relaxation app. Number two, distraction skills. These are things you can do to get your mind off of your anxiety. The key to distraction skills is to not just escape the anxious situation, but instead take some time to get your mind off of your anxiety and then return, 
feeling calm and under control. Examples of distraction skills for anxiety include counting from 1 to 100, listening to music, reading or listening to an audiobook, watching a movie, doing a puzzle, or engaging in a hobby. Number 3. Movement skills. These are things you can do to move your body to physically release your anxious emotions. Examples of movement skills include exercising, cleaning or organizing your room, going for a walk, riding your bike, stretching, yoga, or martial arts. Number 4. Thinking skills. Anxiety often makes us think negative thoughts. These negative thoughts make us feel like, one, the worst possible situation will happen to us, and two, you won't ever be able to handle that situation. But the reality is that the worst case scenario almost never happens. And if difficult situations do happen, we can handle them. To counter your anxious thoughts, you can use thinking skills, such as coaching yourself through the anxious situation, telling yourself encouraging statements, visualizing a peaceful place, focusing on things you are grateful for, or challenging and talking back to your anxious thoughts. For those of you who would like to go deeper into coping skills, we can break down anxiety coping skills into four additional categories. Number one, grounding skills. These are a type of relaxation skill that help to ground you in the present moment so you don't stress about the past or the future. One of the most common grounding skills is called the 54321 grounding technique. For this skill, you sit down calmly and notice your five senses. Start by taking a deep breath to relax your brain and body. Then, focus on the present moment and notice five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. If there is nothing for you to smell or taste, you can simply imagine smelling or tasting something you enjoy. Number two, creative outlets. Creative outlets are a type of distraction skill. They involve engaging in a positive, enjoyable activity using your creativity. Examples of creative outlets include writing, reading, drawing, coloring, painting, building, or anything artistic, creative, and productive that can help get your mind off of your anxiety. Number three, good health habits. Health habits are a very important shield to help defend against anxiety. If you have poor health habits, then your brain and body are less able to manage anxiety when it comes up. Good health habits include eating well, sleeping well, movement or exercise, stress management skills, and reducing caffeine or energy drinks. Number four, self-care. Self-care is anything that helps you take care of your mind, body, and emotions. Self-care includes resting or taking a nap, taking a break, getting out in nature, good hygiene, getting a drink of water, or taking a warm bath or shower. There are literally hundreds of coping skills kids can use to better manage their anxiety. What's important is to identify the coping skills that work best for you, and then turn to those coping skills whenever you feel worried or anxious. Coping skills may not completely eliminate your anxiety, but they are great tools to help reduce your anxiety to a more manageable level. If you are having trouble managing your anxiety on your own, consider talking to a parent, teacher, or counselor to get some additional support. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For more social, emotional, and mental health resources for kids and teens, including visually appealing worksheets, handouts, posters, and infographics, please visit www.mentalhealthcenterkids.com. Thanks for watching!